The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello, and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. At this point, it's no secret that I love building 3D printers, and it probably won't come as any surprise that I want to build another one. But for my fourth 3D printer, just being portable isn't enough. It needs something more. Hmm. But first, the news. Today at Ben News, I want to show you this new single board parallax propeller powered pinball system I'm working on. It has a parallax propeller here, shift registers for your cabinet switch inputs here, uh, your matrix light outputs here up to 64 lights, switch inputs, again 64, and a separate solenoid controller board which drives your high powered coils and pop bumpers and whatnot. The idea here is if this breadboard version works out okay, I can design it into a PCB and then sell that to pinball enthusiasts so they can make their own pinball games. Printer, 3D printer, uh, portable, high print quality, awesome driver board, but how to make it different? Good morning! Ah! I know, I can make a double decker printer so I can print four, I mean two, things at once. I have two goals with this printer. I want it to run slightly faster than a normal 3D printer, so I'm gonna use bigger gears. I also wanted to print two objects at a time. Dual heads are cool, but I think what they'd really be good for is making two copies of something. Because if you're making something on a 3D printer, you usually want more than one anyway. So the first thing we're gonna build is the extruder. This is the thing that actually takes the plastic filament, heats it up, and extrudes it out. We'll talk about the major parts. There's the filament itself, obviously, a drive gear, which pushes the filament through, an idler pinch wheel, which pushes the filament between itself and the drive gear, so it grips onto it. That pushes it into the hot end, which heats it up to around 220 Celsius, and then it's extruded out the end here. It's an end view where you can see that we're gonna use a stepper motor with a built-in gear box to get the proper ratio of torque to push through the filament, which goes into the hot end and extrudes out here. All right, so we're gonna look at the parts, the actual parts that make this up, and then we'll get started. Let's go over the main parts of the extruder. First, we'll need a drive motor. This is either a normal stepper with three to one gearing, such as Wade's extruder, as found on Thingiverse, or a stepper gearbox combo, like this one from Fidgets. Secondly, we need a gripping mechanism. This is either a hobbed bolt or a finely toothed gear. We're using a gear from SDP SI. Next is the idler wheel, which is the thing that presses the filament against the gripping mechanism. The idler wheel is usually clamped in place and spring-loaded to accommodate variations in filament thickness. The final part we need is the hot end. This is the metal tube that heats up the plastic and extrudes it as a thin line. It uses a thermistor to sense temperature. We're using the printer bot version of the hot end. Now let's see how everything comes together. It's time to laser cut the pieces we need to assemble the main extruder body. We're going to be using six millimeter plywood. Exactly six millimeter, not quarter of an inch. We'll use the replicator to print out the idler clamp in 3D. Now that we have all the parts lasered, we can assemble this extruder and also put on the 3D printed parts as well. Just like Lincoln logs. So we slot it together, but then we also screw it together to make sure it's nice and firm. Ticket invalid. Please insert paid ticket. You are going the wrong way. 
recalculating. Your current balance is zero. You have no new messages. Hello, thank you for oh. calling. Oh, I have been on hold all day. This all is of our so... operators are busy now. Goodbye. Oh. Getting the personal, friendly service you're looking for. Not as easy as it used to be. Getting personal, reliable, and fast service from our friendly account specialists. Ah, a whole lot easier. Discover how we're listening to your feedback and building a better experience. Thank you. It was great talking to you. Now that I've assembled the extruder, I'm going to talk about why I did some of the features on it. Here's the material clamp. It's got a slit in it so the material can be guided through it. And there's the bearing here, which holds it against the um, spiked wheel. Spiked wheel. So you put it in like this, and then you pull this over to keep it tight and shut. So that allows you to change the filament quickly. Okay, now one other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to have the hot end be easily removable, even though you probably don't need to remove it, but you can if you want. So you grab this and you pull it out like a tooth. <clears throat> and then the hot end comes right out. And then you can put it right back in too. The reason I did it that way, it's good if you can take things apart without taking everything apart. So if you want to just take this out and declog it or even you know get a different uh, diameter nozzle, it's really easy to do. You don't have to take everything apart. So, And also I like having this be open so you can see right into it. So if it's clogged up with um, you know debris or extra pieces of plastic, you're like, oh look, I can see that it's clogged and then you can blow it out with some air. Here I'm using some acetal bushings from SDPSI. And these work a little better than bearings because they're smoother. They cost about the same. See? They don't go like a bearing does. They also self-align a bit. See how they little move a little bit? So they'll actually line up for you, you know, take care of any errors. So yeah, these should work out pretty good. They also don't take up too much room either. You can just pop them in. They look like those little Rolo candies, you know, those Rolos. Oh, oh it's good. It's got caramel in it. And it also can be used as a 3D printer guide. Oh, hiya bearings. With the extruder built, it's time to test it. I've hooked it up to this printer board here. Printer board is the driver board you can get from printerbot.com. It works really good. It's all compact and quite easy to use. So we have the um, heater element hooked up here, the temperature probe. You have to have the temperature probe hooked up, otherwise it'll give you an error. So you always have to have that hooked up. This will drive the extruder, and then we have the power coming in here. Now I've built two extruders and I'm going to test them with the printer board. The printer board is something you can buy from printerbot.com. It's really nice. It's kind of like the ramp system we've used before, but it's combined. So the microcontroller is combined with the same board that has the stepper motor drivers. And I've hooked up both extruders and both hot ends to the same driver board. And it works out pretty well because I wired the stepper motors in series instead of parallel. And then we have one wire going to both heating elements. I was a little worried about the heating elements not working, but then it turns out the MOSFET that controls the heating element can go up to 78 amps, which is far beyond what this power supply can even do, so we're good there. So now let's do a dual extrusion test. All right, I've got printer phase connected to the board, and I'm going to do a test extrusion. Here they come. Let's see if we can get them. There we go. Sound pretty good. I increased the current on that particular stepper driver so that it would be able to handle two motors. It seems to be working out all right. I'm going to try it at a slightly higher speed. This is probably faster than it would ever extrude, but that's good to test. All right, here's a higher speed. Yep. Mmm, hot off the presses. These need a little bit more reinforcement here because you can see they move a little bit when the extrusion comes through, but I will shore those up. So yeah, looks like the dual extrusion has a chance of working. So in this episode, we built two extruders and made sure that they could run off of one driver board. In our next episode, we're going to be attaching these to the X carriage and moving them left and right. My rant today involves wood sizes. Quite often you go into a store and get a piece of wood like this, and it's labeled as a quarter inch thick. 
but it's actually six millimeters, which is 0 0.0138 inches thinner than quarter inch. If you're doing accurate snap together work, that might as well be a mile. My suggestion to you is always measure your material with dial calipers. Then you know how thick it actually is rather than what it claims to be. This also applies to larger sheets of construction wood as well. My rave today involves accurate snap together pieces, the kind you saw us use in this episode. As long as you measure your materials correctly, pieces will slot together like a jigsaw puzzle. This goes for paper patterns as well. Just because you're not using a CNC machine doesn't mean you shouldn't be accurate. Today's viewer question comes from Kelly Hansen who asks, I am working on a project that requires a lot of digital I.O. pins from my Arduino. Is there a way I can add more pins by adding an external microcontroller or something? There are three solutions you might want to look at. An I.O. expander typically uses an available bus like I2C or SPI to give you more I.O. People use those with a Raspberry Pi. An Arduino Mega is larger and has significantly more I.O. than a standard small Arduino. Finally, you could get the Arduino-compatible PIC-based chip kit, which has even more I.O. than the Mega and is 32-bit and faster. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be working on the horizontal x-axis for our printer. We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>